Robert Siadamak, a name many are not familiar with. Outshined by the likes of Lang and Wilder, this German-born B-movie badass gets my respect. With movies such as Son of Dracula, Phantom Lady, and Criss Cross, what's not to like? Along with his writing brother Kurt, they contributed much to the horror and noir genres. He also discovered Burt Lancaster and directed him in The Killers. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world, and all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimper. The film opens. Two shadow-clad men walking up a dark street. They're looking for somebody. They enter a diner and hold it up. They start berating the customers. Hey, bright boy. Hey, look at him. Bright boy is a thinker. We're going to kill the Swede. And that's who they're looking for. But it doesn't appear that he's showing up. They're going to go look for the Swede. The Swede is waiting in his apartment in the dark. He's done something once. He's accepted his fate. He's ready to die. They burst in. Boom, boom. The Swede is dead. Mr. Reardon, a quote. Two professional killers show up in a small town and put the blast on a filling station attendant, a nobody. There was no attempt at robbery. They were out for one thing and one thing only, to kill him. Mr. Reardon, played by my man Eddie O'Brien, is an insurance man who comes to investigate the life insurance policy of the Swede. It's paid to a queenie, a woman who once saved him from suicide after Ava Gardner left him. I'd cry too, man. Bogey couldn't even bag her. Now, we get into the Citizen Kane storytelling of flashbacks through questioning. We find out from Lieutenant Lubinsky that Oli, the real name of the Swede, was former boxer turned knuckle-headed crook. He falls for Kitty Collins, takes a stolen jewelry wrap for her, and does three years. He gets out and gets involved in planning a payroll caper with Dum Dum, Blinky, and Big Jim Colfax. That's where we find Kitty, too. She's Jim's girl now. Oli don't like that, but cools off for now. This is the bust Reardon has been trying to recoup for the insurance company. Those damn insurance guys always getting into things. When the robbery happens is the best part of the film. It's shown in real time, told through voiceover straight from the news article. They sneak in, mask up, gather the loot, get in the car, and shoot the security guy in the crotch. Ouch! Quarter of a million bucks, and that's where I'll leave you. And at last, this film is a wonderful precursor to the great caper films of the 50s. Through double crosses, lost opportunities, and lust, it never complicates things. It's right there, baby, right down the line. And I can never decide who's sexier in this, Burt Lancaster or Ava Gardner. She, a stacked babe. He, a brute force of nature. I'll let you decide. I don't judge. <laughs>